Well, hello there. Hey guys. Oh, why am I wearing the lab coat? Well, glad you asked. Uh, because I have something I'm going to put out there in the earth. And it's just a theory, an idea, uh, a hi hypothesis, if you will. And, uh, you know, if I wear a lab coat, I'm going to be taken more seriously because it makes me look smarter. So that's why I'm wearing the lab coat. So what am I talking about today? I'm talking about the idea behind the Japanese and the rest of the world syncing up with set rotation and potentially, it's not confirmed, No, we have no actual hard fast data about this, of a worldwide release when new sets come out. Now, I know this is like play stuff and people don't really care and like Mason, I'm, I'm just a collector, I'm just a dirty flipper, scalper, investor. I don't need to know about this stuff. I promise, I'll get there. It's important for you to know, it's important for you to think about, and it could happen. There's no evidence that it will happen, but it could. So just stay with me, hang tight. Okay, so Pokemon is split into a few different entities. The Pokemon Japan branch is like um, the home branch, obviously, like that's where it all started. A majority of the decisions and, and things are made, and sets are produced and, and all the stuff that is planned out years and years in advance is done by Pokemon Japan. Pokemon International is basically who services the rest of the world and gets everything out there and prints it all in the different languages and, and organizes it and ships it worldwide and all that stuff. They're kind of just like um, the, the, the working arm of Pokemon. But Pokemon Japan, they have a different uh, tournament system. They have a different uh, management system. Uh, they make decisions differently. Uh, as you know, Japanese product is, is made in Japan, whereas the rest of it is made here in places like Millennium Print Group and all those places here in the States. So they're just fundamentally different. They're ran differently. The, the philosophy behind them is ran differently. And we all know that Western, or Western businesses and uh, Eastern Japanese businesses uh, they just work differently in general. They have different uh, scopes and, and I guess basic business principles that they kind of stick to. Anyways, now that we got all that out of the way, the idea that everything's going to release at the same time is a big deal because as of right now, a lot of people are getting spoiled to English releases months in advance, right? Uh, normally they do in Japan, they release two sets and maybe some other stuff mixed in there and they smush it together and that's our English and rest of the world set, right? If we got on the same rotation and had a worldwide release for all these new sets going forward in the new year, that would basically mean that we all get the same stuff at the same time. There is no spoiler season for the rest of the world. We all just see the same stuff at the same time, maybe like a couple weeks in advance as opposed to... Uh, you know, where it's just, America's just sitting here watching uh, Japan play with all these cool new cards and getting all this play testing in and experience with all these cards and then going to an international competition and having months potentially more experience than the rest of the world. But that's, that's a, again, a playable argument that really isn't hindering here. The point is, the Japanese product, when it's released, think of it like EV Heroes right now. EV Heroes just got a huge reprint and huge huge it is it is large it's just one of the larger reprints probably that japan has ever done and yet still things are still stupid expensive and and prices are lowered for a little while but they will eventually go up because we are already seeing that type of product as it leaves the country of japan in droves to the rest of the world that the prices are not changing. They're also very expensive. The costs are cost prohibitive to players. And as a trading card company, you want your stuff to be have value, but be relatively cheap and accessible. That's the whole the whole idea. Because if it's successful, you sell more cards and sell more products. So you want it to be out there in the world for people to buy. And for Japan sets, uh, it's getting to the point where there's so much interest uh, nation or uh, worldwide at this point that 
the product that says for sale in Japan only is leaving the country and going international. And that's a problem. That's a problem for Japanese players. That's a problem for Japanese buyers and sellers and Pokemon Japan in general that they're not able to meet the demand that now that the world wants Japanese cards and early that and the earlier batches of cards that they just aren't able to, to to cope with that. There's no way that they can keep up, possibly. So the solution would be to sync up the the uh, sets and have it be a worldwide release, so that all this product isn't flooding out in the country of Japan whenever a new set releases, because the rest of the world doesn't have it. Now, I know I'll be the first one to say the Japanese product is normally superior. It's better quality. It's nicer cut. It looks better, feels better, smells better, probably tastes better. I don't know, but probably. I wouldn't be surprised. And there's still going to be international buyers for that stuff, no doubt. But if we released all the stuff at the same time, it would help. And if we all had the same stuff at the same time, it would help. So that's why we really need to sync up and just do away with all these... Um, big huge sets of, of conglomerate stuff that's just, you know, are thrown into a big mixing bowl and tossed around and said, all right, here's your Lost Origin. Hope you enjoy it. It doesn't make any sense. If we had smaller, more concise sets, just like Japan did, that'd be a, that'd be a big, big game changer. Uh, prices for boxes wouldn't be as expensive. It would be as cost prohibitive for people. They'd be able to go out and buy boxes more frequently and literally more frequently because we'd have more frequently releases which would be uh, good for me as a business I don't have to throw $30,000 out every couple months when a new Pokemon set releases I can just spread that out in consistent and like predictable ways for sets when they release that'd be awesome that'd be super good and again there wouldn't be so much pressure on Japan to try to print up to a worldwide audience that I don't, I don't think they have the facilities to do so. I don't know if they can uh, facilitate that. So that's really what the whole the whole crux of this is. And I think Japan has a real problem, and that's is going to be the solution: is to hopefully sync up and, and kind of take the pressure off of the sellers and, and just the Japan company in general, and keep that stuff, or at least more of it, in, in Japan, so that players have stuff and is accessible and you know there's not so much um, incentive for people to ship it overseas when it all releases at the same time so uh, it's an interesting concept and it's an interesting thought I'm interested to see what you guys would see or what you guys uh, would like to see if you feel the same way should we have a worldwide similar release uh, would you like a smaller set every four to six weeks as opposed to you know one every two to three months uh, let me know uh, I'm interested to see and hopefully uh, there's a, a shiny shimmering uh, chance that it could happen uh, more than likely it's not going to and we're just gonna have the same way and we're just gonna push back the actual uh, standard thing so it is synced together but we're still not releasing at the same time so it's not helpful but anyways it's a it's a nice thought so let me know what you guys think below um, just an interesting little, little thought. I appreciate y'all. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. All right, bye.